Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of Imperial Diecast, and today is a very special day. Because not only am I reviewing the first GT Spirit on my channel, but it's also the first officially licensed Koenigsegg on my channel. Now I say this because Koenigsegg is a brand that is very fussy when it comes to handing out their licenses for model car manufacturers, especially in 118 scale. For the past 10-15 years since they've been able to establish themselves as a well-known supercar company on the world, the only officially licensed brands that were allowed to make Koenigsegg models in 118 all these years were Frontiart, a sealed resin manufacturer whose models were sometimes sold under their sister brand called Sophie Art, and the fully opening Auto Art, which used to be diecast but has now switched to plastic, or I should say composite. The point being that if you were a diecast collector, for the past 10 15 years up until 2022, the only way you could add a 118 Koenigsegg to your collection was to buy from one of these two manufacturers. And in both cases, the model would set you back hundreds and hundreds of dollars. Euros, even. With the fully opening auto art actually being the cheapest. There simply was no budget brand. Koenigsegg never gave their license to, say, Maisto, whose 118 Lamborghinis you can pick up for 15 bucks at your Costco's and Sam's or even 118 Ferraris for that matter. Motormax had the Pagani license. You might remember my review of the Champagne Gold Huayra. And while 118 Bugattis were expensive during the Veyron era, with perhaps the exception of Rastar's Veyron GSV, the Chiron license was given to several budget manufacturers, including Welly, which made a slightly higher-end version under their GT Autos brand. But Koenigseggs? No chance. But since 2020, things have changed. Back then, the first officially licensed budget Koenigseggs were released in 143 under the Altaya brand. And now in 2022, we have this. The most affordable 118 Koenigsegg. MSRP is 120 euros. I got it for 108 which is still hella expensive compared to the actual budget range. But considering the auto art costs three times as much, and the fronty art costed four times as much before it sold out due to the small production number, GT Spirit getting the 118 Koenigsegg license has been one of the best things to happen to diecast collectors in recent times. Now, this is actually the second Koenigsegg that GT Spirit have made. The first one was the Gemera, plug-in hybrid four-seat Grand Tourer, which they made in a dark grey, and perhaps they'll make it in more colours. But let's talk about this car. The Fronty Art version of this, which released back in 2020, is long sold out, and the Auto Art version has not yet released as of the making of this video. But I'm assuming that when it does, the MSRP will be above 300 euros. Probably around 350, because in just two years, AutoArt has yet again increased their prices compared to the release of the 1-to-1, which was at 300 MSRP. 
So that's why I decided to get this GT Spirit, even though it is a sealed resin brick where nothing opens. Just to be able to save more than 200 euros this way. And since this is a limited release of 2,500 pieces, I don't know for how long these will be around. And once they sell out, the 350 euro auto art will be your only option. So the Koenigsegg Jesko is not pronounced as Jesko, but as Jesko, because in Germanic languages the J is basically a Y. And this car is named after Christian von Koenigsegg's father, Jesko von Koenigsegg. The full name of this car is Jesko Attack, with the other variant being the Jesko Absolut, which does not have the high downforce generating rear wing and therefore worse track performance but for that a higher top speed. Now the Yesco is the official successor to the Agera because the Regera was a plug-in hybrid and not meant to be the successor. The Yesco debuted in 2019 and back then it was said that 125 Yescos will be built, about 40 a year, and all build slots have been sold out. And each Yesco has a price tag of 2.5 to 3 million euros. Now this model is in the pearl white launch spec, and it has green accenting. So taking a look at the front of the 118 GT Spirit Koenigsegg Yesco, I think that the front is definitely very futuristic looking. In the middle, we have the Koenigsegg crest. This is a photo-etched three-dimensional piece, but it's not entirely a badge, it's more like a decal. And underneath, we have a reflective chrome strip. The headlights, they are a disappointment. The Agera's headlights were stunningly beautiful, and even the Regera's were fine, but the Yesco's are slim and boring. Not really GT Spirit's fault, though, but more of a Koenigsegg design goof. I mean, let's be serious. These are the worst headlights any Koenigsegg so far had. Even the Gemeras look more interesting. And we can go all the way back to the CC8S to say the headlights look better. Although if you look closely, you can actually see that it says Koenigsegg on the driver's side headlight. That is so cool. I never noticed that until now, but on the passenger side headlight, it is just a blank DRL strip. So weird that it is only on one side. And here's a look at the big front splitter. Now this one has a green stripe in the middle, although on my particular model it's not entirely straight, it's just slightly slanted, which I'm disappointed with, but I'm, there's nothing else you can do about it. And then of course we have the side canard here, which adds to the aerodynamic drag for the car. Now even though this GT Spirit is only one-fourth the price point of the front yard, it still comes with photo-etched grille meshes too. In fact, it's not just here at the front, but also on the hood scoop and also at the sides, which I'll show you later. Now there's an air dam here in the front, which sucks the air in and blows it out the vent here. So quite similar to the one-to-one, -one, there is no space in the front trunk to store anything, and most certainly not the removable roof. And then we have these louvers here on top of the wheels for the air to escape and cool the wheels as it does. Um, I think they're perforated, and they look pretty cool. And then, of course, we have the massive single windshield wiper that sits centered on the front windshield. So overall, this is a very aggressive front look. And here's a look at the side of the Koenigsegg Yesco, and just check out this amazing side profile. This has hypercar written all over it. We've got Yesco written right here in chrome photo etched lettering. Then, of course, we have the massive rear wing. 
which we'll get to later. Now you know how Ferrari puts the red, white, and green on the sides for the Italian flag? Well, looks like Christian was inspired by that and decided to do the same here on his car, with the blue and yellow being the Swedish colors. And right above you have a scoop for the air that flows past the wheels to exit the wheel well. We also have these massive air scoops here on the side, and of course they also have the perforated grill mesh in a hexagonal pattern. So that's nice of GT Spirit to implement that. And then we have this blade in front, which you gotta be careful when picking up the car because you don't wanna like squash it or anything when you pick up the car like this. So you better pick it up like this. And now let's take a closer look at the rims. Now you can see that these rims are pretty wide. Uh, I think they're 20 inches at the front and 21 inches at the rear with center locks. Now the center locks are supposed to be black, but they're also supposed to have Koenigsegg crests on them. Not chrome ones, but black ones, but GT Spirit just decided to leave them blank. And these are officially called Air Core Carbon Fiber Wheels. No sign of any carbon fiber weave on the GT Spirit, though. The tires are Michelin branded, and they have these cool segmented white walls. Of course, we have vented brake discs and brake calipers with Koenigsegg written on them. And these are actually in-house brake calipers and carbon ceramic brake discs. The calipers are painted lime green, just like the accenting on the car. that You can see right here to the left of the wheel on the little fin there. To the right of the wheel, you can see the indicator, although it's just painted on. And here we are at the back of the Koenigsegg Yesco, and the back, I think, is one of the most aggressive looking angles of this car. Now, there is one issue on my particular Koenigsegg Yesco, and that is that the rear spoiler was not entirely level. I don't know if you can see it, but the left side is maybe a little bit, like, slanted towards the bottom compared to the right side. And I basically had to gently press on this side of the wing to make it more um, level, I suppose. And this is a process that I didn't want to put too much pressure on because I don't want to break it. But the wing is still flexible enough that if you do this for a little while... Um, it will adjust itself a little bit. Like, it looks a little better now than it did when I unboxed it, and I didn't feel like sending it back just because of that one issue. Like, if I hadn't told you, you probably would not have noticed, because it is still fairly level. And from the front, you can't tell. But let's talk a little bit about the details. Taillight design, just like the headlights, kind of boring. Just an oval red blob. It reminds me a bit of the taillights on the latest Bentley Continental. However, the overall design of the back is an improvement over the Regera. If you look at the back, it looks like an angry face compared to the Regera's taillights, which were curved up and gave the impression of a sad face. <laughs> Again, we have the Yesco photo-etched lettering in chrome here. It looks really nice. And in the center, we have the chrome exhaust. Now, the word Koenigsegg is supposed to be written on the top of the exhaust, but on this GT Spirit, there is nothing there. However, there is a black dot underneath, and... That is supposed to be the rear backup camera, so I'm glad that GT Spirit included that detail. Below we have the ESCO license plate. It says Koenigsegg and small lettering underneath it. And flanking it are the reverse lights. And if I turn on the flash, you can see that we have more perforated grill mesh back there. And a little depth and very few sort of details to simulate the engine. So I think that this is good enough. And also these brake lights are stickers, but they do have a nice texture on them. 
which you can see under the flash. Rear diffuser looks good, but it's smooth. Underneath the wing, we have the photo etched Koenigsegg Ghost Squadron symbol. And then we have this silver band that started in the front and continues here at the back. And flanking it, we have two small air vents, although GT Spirit did not put any kind of mesh in there. Instead, it's just some wet plastic. Now, allegedly, this rare boomerang style wing can generate more downforce than the one to one. Koenigsegg claims the wing can generate 1,400 kilograms of downforce when the car is at top speed. And since the car itself weighs just a little bit over 1,400 kilograms, this car might just be capable of driving on the ceiling if it is fast enough. Now, it's interesting, on the 400 euro fronty art, the white on this wing is a regular gloss white, and not the same eggshell color as the car body. But here, the 120 euro GT Spirit managed to put the same eggshell metallic paint on the wing to match the car body. On the sides, it says 251. Not sure what it is supposed to mean. You do get four bolts of riveting on top of it, though, which keep the winglets mounted onto the main wing. And now looking at the two main supports of the wing, you can see that they have additional photo-etched Koenigsegg crests on each side. So there's four in total, and the wing itself is split along the middle. And I'd say the spoiler is just overall one of the most awesome wing designs in the entire model car world out there. The Koenigsegg Yesco is designed in such a way that it has a continuous panel which starts off as a moonroof through which you can see into the interior, and then continues to become the rear windshield, allowing for a view out of the back of the car, and then transitions into an engine cover. One disappointment of the GT Spirit casting is that the engine isn't visible through this panel here. On the front yard, you'd be able to see the cross brace with the triple X suspension logo on the center, as you can see in this picture. Unfortunately, GT Spirit didn't bother to cast that underneath the window. Speaking of the engine, the Yesco is powered by a 5 liter twin turbo V8 with 1,281 horsepower on normal gasoline but on E85 biofuel, it can generate 1,603 horsepower, making it the most powerful hypercar in my entire model car collection. Now, allegedly, the top speed of this car is 300 miles per hour, or 480 kilometers per hour, although we haven't seen evidence of it yet. And speaking of no evidence, the Yesco Absolute, which does away with the rear wing to go faster, supposedly has a top speed of more than 500 kilometers per hour. And now let's take a look at the interior of the Koenigsegg Yesco. For a sealed resin, this is a very, very detailed interior. I mean, just look at all the stuff we have here. Right in the middle, you can see the 9-speed multi-clutch transmission. And on the dash is a nice aircon with a chrome grille, although it's just a sticker. Underneath, though, we have the LCD screen. Under the flash, you can perhaps read the LCD screen better, and you can see that it has icons on the bottom. And on the top, you have the Koenigsegg crest and main menu or something written next to it. And in the middle is actually the car with its dihedral synchrohelix doors opened up. Taking a look at the seats, they're white with Koenigsegg crests on the headrests. You get fabric seat belts with photo etched belt buckles. And there's even the space for two cup holders. Very, very cool stuff. One thing that the interior of the GT Spirit version is missing 
but which the front yard has, are six silver circles on the dashboard, which are supposed to be devices that prevent the windshield from fogging up. And now taking a look at the driver's side of the Koenigsegg Esco. The driver's side also looks amazing. For comparison, here's a look at the real car's interior. And you can see that GT Spirit managed to add all the details. What an amazing steering wheel. It has the Koenigsegg crest in the middle, and on the bottom you can see Koenigsegg written in bright green lettering, which makes it a bit hard to read under the flash. There's supposed to be carbon fiber on the bottom half of the wheel, but again, GT Spirit just used a gloss black. Now if you look at the two spokes, they actually contain some buttons, which are not buttons, but small touch-sensitive LCD screens. What's interesting about the Yesco is that the instrument gauge is not mounted on a dashboard binnacle, like with 99% of all cars in existence, but instead is attached to the steering column. Which is cool. But what happens when you're turning your car and the instrument panel shifts toward the left or right? How will you be able to read the gauges without also having to tilt your head to the left or right? Well, there's a gyro built into the display that keeps the writing horizontal. And there's another gauge here, which I think is an accelerometer that measures the inertial forces when you're driving. And now taking a look at the bottom of the vehicle. Uh, you can see that this being a resin, it is very flat. There is absolutely no undercarriage detailing. However, it does say GT Spirit. Koenigsegg Yesco. And my model is car number 1372 out of 2500. So yeah, here's more details on the rear diffuser. Smooth and reflective instead of being full of carbon fiber. Oh well. So overall, the car looks fantastic, right? If you have no problems collecting sealed resin where nothing opens, it looks great. It has the perfect ride height, all the proportions, it's got everything. Until you realize one huge error. The Jesco is supposed to be a hypercar. And what do hypercars have? Carbon fiber. Where is the carbon fiber? The front splitter is gloss black when it is supposed to be carbon fiber, like on the front yard. These side canards would have also been carbon fiber on the front yard. The mirror stocks are supposed to be carbon fiber, but are not. The side skirts are supposed to be carbon fiber. The front half of the rear wing is supposed to be carbon fiber. The rear wing supports are supposed to be carbon fiber. This black panel is supposed to be carbon fiber. Nothing is. They've got the gloss effect, but not the carbon fiber pattern. In fact, the only carbon fiber on this entire car is right here, covering these air scoops on the roof. Which, however, is where GT Spirit was supposed to put more grill mesh like they did on other parts of the car but covered it up with carbon fiber instead. Now for serious collectors, I can totally understand how this can be an absolute deal-breaker for them. And they do well to stay away from this GT Spirit, because, I mean, even Burago and Maisto and Motormax put carbon fiber patterns on their models, so for the life of me I don't know why GT Spirit decided to omit it entirely. Maybe it's got something to do with the material being resin instead of die-cast with plastic parts, and replicating a carbon fiber pattern on resin is perhaps an expensive process compared to slapping on some carbon fiber looking plastic parts on a die-cast model, and hence Fronty Art implementing the carbon fiber look on their resin casting comes with a hefty price tag. I don't know the specifics, but sometimes ignorance is bliss. And if you haven't seen the Fronty Art, you would be perfectly happy with this GT Spirit Yesco, because at the end of the day, instead of obsessing about carbon fiber, which is anyway invisible to the human eye from a distance of more than a meter under regular indoor light conditions, meaning no bright studio lighting, 
What really matters, then, is the overall look of the car. The shape, the design, and from a distance, the GT Spirit Yesco looks very, very similar to the ridiculously expensive and long out-of-stock front yard. So if you have this sitting on your display shelf, it will look fantastic, even without the carbon fiber. Alright guys, I hope you liked my review of the 118 scale GT Spirit Koenigsegg Yesco. It is definitely an awesome looking model, and the price point is actually quite affordable compared to the Fronty Art and Auto Art versions. Now I have reviewed a couple of other Koenigseggs as well, but in smaller scales. If you want to check out those reviews, you'll find them here. And as always, take care, have a wonderful day, and this is Imperial Diecast, signing out.